everyone, welcome back to the show. My name is Mike, and today we're gonna to be talking about the big lizard. We're gonna go through the trade checklist, which is basically the trade entry checklist where we talk about what the trade is, what the assumption is that we have with the strategy, what happens when the stock price goes up, goes down, stays the same, and then we'll give you some for entry as well. So the biggest difference between the big lizard and the jade lizard is really just the strike selection for the short options and also the selection of the underlying that we deploy this in. So let's get right into it with the big lizard and we'll overview exactly what this is one more time. So we're, we're going through the big lizard. Really, it's just different strikes on the short options than the jade lizard. So the jade lizard, we would be selling an out of the money put and selling an out of the money call and then defining our risk with the purchase of a long call further out of the money. But with the big lizard, we actually create a straddle. So we're basically selling the same strike at the money, which just means the closest available strike to the stock price that's trading. And we're gonna sell the at the money put as well as the at the money call in the same expiration. And then we're gonna go out and define our risk with our long call here. So this is going to be routed for a credit because of course the at the money options that we're selling are going to have a lot more value than this out of the money call that we're purchasing to define our risk. So at the end of the day, this is going to be a neutral to bullish premium selling strategy with no risk to the upside if we set it up correctly. And I'll show you how to do that here. And really, this strategy, when we compare the big lizard to a jade lizard, I would say the big lizard really takes advantage of volatility skew here because of the fact that we're really going to be paying next to nothing for this out of the money call that we're purchasing. Whereas if we had a normal volatility or even a reverse volatility skew where the calls would be trading richer than the puts, this out of the money call that we're purchasing is going to cost us a lot more than in a normal volatility skew where the premium usually is all the way to the put side where the call side premium tends to drop off as you go out of the money. So with this strategy, we really are taking advantage of that normal volatility skew environment. So we'll definitely look for those environment, uh, environmental aspects of that when we're placing this trade. So our assumption is neutral to bullish, and it's neutral to bullish because of the fact that Yes, we're gonna be most profitable if the stock price stays right here, right where the strikes are at expiration, but we can also be profitable if we set it up correctly, if the stock price goes all the way to the upside. We're not gonna have any risk when we set it up correctly, and when we're looking at what type of environment we wanna be in, we always wanna be in a high IV environment when we're looking to sell premium. So when I talk about setting this up correctly, basically what I mean is we want to make sure that the width of our call spread, so the distance between the strike that we purchase to define our risk and the call strike that we sell, which is at the money, we want to calculate the width of that strike and we basically want to make sure that we are collecting more than the width of that call spread. So if I'm collecting maybe $9.10, I would want to make sure that this width of the calls is not more than $9. I want to collect more than the width. So basically a good rule of thumb is to set up the straddle just by itself to begin with. So just forget about the long option here and set up the straddle first. Determine what sort of credit you're looking at so if I'm collecting maybe $9.20 for the straddle, I know that I'm probably gonna have to go out about nine points or maybe eight points to determine exactly where I can get, or the farthest I can get away from the current stock price while still collecting more than the width of the spread. So if I'm collecting $9.20 for just the straddle, let's say I go all the way up to nine points away and I can buy this call for 10 cents. That would give me an overall net credit of $9.10, which exceeds the width of the call spread by 10 cents, which means that even if I have to buy back this call spread, if the stock price is way up here at expiration, if I have to buy back that spread for $9, it's not gonna matter because I collected $9.10 upon trade entry, so I'll still be profitable by 10 cents. Of course, it's not gonna be as lucrative as that $9.10 where we would realize that if the stock price was right at our strikes at expiration, but it's still gonna be better than losing money. So let's go to the next slide and we'll talk about what happens when the stock price goes up, stays the same, and goes down. So with this strategy, it's very similar to the Jade Lizard. And really the only difference is how the strategy is set up and how much we are impacted by the stock price staying the same. So when the stock price goes up, as long as we set it up correctly where we're collecting more overall than the width of our call spread, 
we're going to be seeing a small profit. So the call prices are going to increase, which is going to be bad for the position, but the total credit will offset this. So really the key to having no risk to the upside is collecting more than the width of that call spread. And if we do that, we basically are putting ourselves at a no risk position to the upside when we're talking about the stock price going up. So of course the put will expire worthless if the stock price is way up here at expiration. And we're gonna have to buy back this short call spread because basically all a big lizard is, is a short at the money call spread with a short put sold against that as well. So we would have to buy back these call options here. So I'd have to buy back this short one and I would use my sale of this long one to offset the losses and define my risk at the width of those strikes. So as long as I collect more than the width of the strikes, I'm totally in the clear when it comes to risk to the upside. When the stock stays the same, we're gonna have theta decay working for us. All of these contracts would be losing value. So even if the stock price moves up a little bit or goes down a little bit, it's gonna be okay because we're gonna see a lot of theta come out of those options. But with at the money options, what's interesting is that they do tend to hold their value over time. If you think about an expiration that's expiring this week and you compare those values to an expiration expiring a month from now, what you'll notice is that the at the money options will hold their value the longest. So even though we have uh, weekly expirations where we're seeing things that are expiring this week, if we look at the value in the options, you're gonna see the most value right at the money or maybe a couple strikes out of the money and you're gonna see the value taper off pretty quickly because there's not a lot of time in those expirations or the expiration for this Friday. So when we talk about theta decay and how that really works for at the money options, we're gonna see theta decay tend to increase with at the money options near expiration. So since they hold the value the longest, maybe there's only three or four days left, but if it's still holding value, it's gonna to have to decay. That extrinsic value has to come down to zero by expiration since stock can only be traded for intrinsic value. So there can't be any extrinsic value in the options at expiration. So you're gonna usually see theta decay rapidly increase with at the money options. So be aware of that, but what's really cool with these sort of strategies is we're definitely collecting a lot more. So instead of a regular Jade Lizard where we have all out of the money options and we're usually trying to collect around a dollar, here I can collect a lot more, especially with higher price underlying. So we usually don't really hold these until expiration. We usually try and take these off for a smaller profit because we're collecting so much. But when we talk about the worst case scenario, that's again going to be when the stock price goes down because that's really where our risk lies. So if I'm selling a put naked and I've got no risk to the upside, my risk is gonna be in this short put option here. So basically I just need to realize that I'm still using a short put. I do have undefined risks to the downside, but the good thing is that stocks cannot go below zero. So at the end of the day, my real losses are gonna be capped at zero if the stock price ends up going there. So keep, take that into consideration and really what we need to realize is the call prices are going to decrease, which is gonna be good since we sold that call spread, but my put price is going to increase. So if I wanna get out of the position, I'm gonna to have to buy that put back at a higher value if the stock price is way down here because my put would be pretty deep in the money and I'm going to have to buy it back for probably a much higher amount than what I sold it for, which is why we have this highlighted in red here as our one potential loss scenario. But let's go into the next slide and we'll talk about a few keep in mind when we're deploying this strategy. So the very first one, as always, is the break even calculation. It's really important to understand where the break even is so that we can really have a good idea of where the stock can go. Maybe if the stock price starts going down, I might start panicking, but I might realize that my break even is way down here, in which case I would be okay. So when we're talking about the break even with this strategy, there's really no break even to the upside if we set it up correctly, where we're collecting more than the width of the call spread. So when we're looking at break even, we're looking at our downside break even or our put strike break even. And just like any other premium selling strategy, our break even is going to be improved. So all we have to do is take our overall credit and subtract it from the strike. So if I collected $9.10 in that example, I would just take my strike, subtract $9.10 to the downside, and that's where my break even would be. When we're looking at implied volatility, 
The higher the IV, the better, not because of the fact that we can move our strikes out, because we're really dealing with at the money strikes, so our strikes are gonna be the same. But what's really important with this strategy is the credit collection. So the Jade Lizard yesterday, we talked about how implied volatility helps us move our strikes way out of the money and still collect that roughly around $1. But for this strategy, what's gonna happen is with higher implied volatility, since at the money options are affected most by changes in implied volatility. Those at the money options are gonna be pumped up really high. So I'm gonna be able to sell this strategy for a lot more credit than I would for a medium or in a low IV environment. And what that does is it drastically moves my break even. So if I'm able to collect $9.10 in a medium IV environment, but I'm able to collect $12 in a high IV environment, as you can imagine, my break even is gonna to shoot to the left, which is gonna be great for me. It gives me a lot more room to the downside for this this strategy to move or the stock price to move before I start losing money. So it's always good for any sort of strategy where we're collecting money with selling at the money options to collect more or collect as high amount of premium as we can. And since we're collecting a lot of value, we're not gonna be looking for that 50% profit potential as it stands. So with a lot of other premium selling strategies, we're gonna be looking at that 50% mark, but those are usually strategies where we're dealing with out of the money options, where we have a lot of room to wiggle in the middle, but when we're looking at at the money options where we're selling them, it's gonna have, we're gonna have a hard time collecting or getting to that 50% mark because at the money options hold their value the longest. So since we collect a lot more because of that, we're going to be looking between 25 and 50% max profit. So if I collected $12 for the strategy, maybe I'll look to close it when it gets to $8. That would result in a $4 or $400 profit, which is about a third of that uh, per percentage there. So about 33% would be landing right there. So it's a good way to get into the zone with that sort of profit potential and just realize that some strategies we don't always hold that until we reach 50% max profit. And with our ideal setup where we have no upside risk, it's definitely good to remember that and really ingrain that in our brains because we wanna make sure that when we have these strategies, we don't want any risk to the upside. We wanna eliminate directional movements and where directional movements can hurt us. And that's exactly what we can do by just setting it up correctly. And when, with, with this strategy, we actually look at underlyings that are trading at higher prices than 75. So with the Jade Lizard, we usually look at underlyings below 75, but with the Big Lizard, we usually look at underlyings above 75 because those are the underlyings that are gonna give us a lot of value for those at the money options, which is really gonna widen our break evens. So this is a strategy for those higher priced underlyings for sure. But let's wrap all this together with some takeaways for you. So the first takeaway is it's a neutral to bullish range bound strategy, just like the Jade Lizard, but the difference is just the strike selection. And the higher IV environment is best for that wide break even, not because we can move our strikes far out of the money, but because we can collect a lot more and move the break even because of that. And since we're closing our trade at 25 to 50% profit, because we're collecting a lot more, we're gonna be looking for those underlyings that are trading for $75 or more, because those are the ones that are gonna be able to give us that high premium. We're not gonna be able to see a very high premium trading this in a lower priced underlying. So thanks so much for tuning in. If you've got any questions or feedback, or if you wanna see a whiteboard of your own, shoot me an email here, or you can follow me at Mike. Stay tuned though, we've got Jim Schultz coming up next.